Issues first up was a little scary because you were in the company of guys like Mark Wright, um, David McPhail, um, and at that time, you know, things change as they go. Uh, John Gatsby, uh, these guys are the heavyweights in New Zealand comedy. And I got into the show because I wrote a song for my radio program about Winston Peters. And it was just a, a, a piss take, if I can say that. And they heard it on radio and they said, come and sing the song. So I went to like a production meeting. So you got all these people lined up, bro. It was like an interview. So I'm singing this song with a guitar and I'm thinking, oh, I'm dying here. And it's just, great, we love it. We're going to buy the song. So I thought, oh, yeah, I didn't know the story. And, uh, and you were going to perform it. So from two o'clock, singing the song roughly, to five o'clock, I was in makeup. And then we were on air as a reggae band. I had the wig. People were powdering me up. And that was it. I was coached into that character of Winston. Um, I was, I was, and Mark Wright was the one who, who got along. So he says, don't move too much. Just think complete arrogance. Pronounce your Māori badly. You know, like tenor guitars, gadua. You know, and you know, just stupid stuff. And, 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 and we'll make sure that the script is right. And very, very nerve wracking. And I had a habit of going like this when I got nervous. And you just can't do that. So you had to, actually discipline yourself to be quite stiff and, and get into it. But I learned to be, bro, get over it. Do the gig. If you're not happy with it, you've got another one next, you know, you've got another one and another one. You just got better and better at it. Well, the sh show ratings-wise was hugely successful. And I think it was part of that journey of where I was going to go next. And, you know, Pete had, uh, um, had, had worked with Billy, had worked with um, uh, McPhail and Gadsby. They're from that Christchurch South Island boy stable. And i got to say, Pete was hugely supportive of me at Issues too. Um, in fact, um, you know, I should mention him early. He was, he was in, in that first time at Issues, he was the one sort of sitting there going, on you, mate, can I hang in there? Everybody else is going, oh, yeah, what's this? Oh, is that funny? Or whatever. He's going, on you, mate. Um, you know, Pete's a pretty hard case, sort of a joker, and, and um, um, like most relationships, we, we, uh, we had our really good days and not so good days, but it was a good show and it was a good leg up for me to move on. The versatility is what I enjoyed. Um, you know, I remember doing takeoffs of Aaron Neville, of B.B. King, of Stevie Wonder, of um, Joanna Paul, and that really stretches your performance bones. Um, I had an old character, an old nanny, old Māori lady character, you know, you used to talk like this, Kilda, you fellas. But she had dagger dialogue, and to be able to explore those things and those Māori characters uh, was really good. And then they popped up again when Māori television came in and we saw uh, Mātai Smith doing the old nannies and stuff like that. And I'm going, good on you, bro, because they're very good. But, uh, you know, we know where they came from. And they were long there long before I turned up. We made a huge mistake with Tatutu because we thought that we were like sort of all one people, very naive. So it was okay for a Māori guy to get up and take the piss out of Māori, but when you are a clever, smart-ass sort of a Māori guy taking the piss out of the English, uh, 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 uh. So we'd do jokes about, well, why do you like gold? Well, because it's rare. Well, so you like gold because it's hard to find? Yes. Well, do you make pots out of it? Well, no, it's too soft. Well, you can make guns out of it? No. Like, the stupidity of it all. Uh, we made jokes out of um, disease. We made jokes out of, um, you know, so you bought... Uh, we just took the piss out of the way the colonials were, you know, the way they worked their women, you know, terrible. You wouldn't want to marry a parker, you know. And we got... Um, plus on the other side, I think our writing could have been better too. Um, so we got chastised. They hated it, you know. But we thought we'd all laugh together. That's a long time away, bro. We, I moved out of our station, you know. But in the second series, and I, and I salute, um, I actually salute that bloody crazy Andy Shaw and New Zealand On Air for giving us another series, and it was a lot better series. And again, it was the highest rating comedy series on television. Um, 
A lot of people really loved it. A lot of people really hated it. Eh? But that's comedy. To play a Maori guy who loved his daughter, uh, to play a Maori guy who um, who really didn't understand the Parker way of life, um, and it wasn't a repeat of Billy stuff. And I think, you know, it's sad when people think that way. You know, it's a bit like saying um, Sonny Bill Williams. Well, he's no good. He's just doing what Jonah did. You stupid idiot. I mean, this is the business we're in. Um, you know, we need more people like Billy, like me, like Mike, Māori performers, our, our, our wahine performers coming through the ranks. But um, when I look back at those shows, I'm very proud of them. Um, plus it gave me a chance to stretch my drama bones a bit. Um, I've had no drama coaching. Um, and, you know, still comedy, but the timing, eh? Mine wasn't a big part, so I had a lot of time to sit around. And um, I'm, I'm a nervous person, naturally. Um, but um, the, the, the American Negro uh, woman, Dee, was her, so I just figured her first name at the moment, it was a couple of years ago. Um, anyway, she was around the time of Malcolm X. And I watched her work, and was setting up, bro, there's lights, there's cameras, there's bloody, it's all, you know, 50 people and three people in the scene. And uh, Tool would go, um, and action. And she was old as Sheila. And I'm thinking, she didn't hear the action. I was just back in the show. No, no, you're sweet to go, dear. You know, and say the line was, um, you know, I'm sick and tired of you boys mucking around. So the camera's rolling. Everything's rolling. And she, and she goes, I'm sick and tired of you boys rolling. I'm sick and tired of you boys. I'm sick. And, and then she'd just look down the camera or look at that and she'd just nail this line. And I learned this wonderful lesson about action don't mean action, mate. You get ready. And she was this old school theatre film performer and she would just mumble to herself like this person who's losing it and then she'd, she'd just go bang. And it was like art. And it is art. And I'm a newbie to that. So that was that, that I just enjoyed watching those, those guys perform, you know. I like making TV that families can watch together. I also would love to play a mongrel bob leader, by the way, if somebody was writing a film, you know. But, um, and, and, the TV, and the show's doing really, really well for Māori television, like really well. Um, we don't have floozies, uh, not floozies, that's the wrong word, I apologise for that, but we don't have beautiful assistants. Because when you look back at those shows, you know, you've got these beautiful assistants and that. Stacey Daniels locks this show down, bro. We both lock this show down and it's 50-50. But... What it does, it brings our people up onto stage and you see a magic that you can't see anywhere else. It's in the bag, does it? Hormite Pucky Pucky does it. They never get to get on stage. They get on, you know, they've got a tooth missing and the makeup's not quite right, but it's real. And that's where the jewellery of television comes from, quite often is having, and it's not reality TV per se, but it's real TV and real characters. And it's a bloody joy. We were in Ōtaki, old lady come up, and we kiss everybody. Only us and the palms do that. The, the Yanks are scared of getting some disease, you know, us and the palms, you know. And we kiss, kia ora, kia ora, kia ora, kia ora, and this old lady, and uh, she couldn't even hear what I was saying. Anyway, we got up to $750, bro. And I'm going, how many mokopunu you got? Oh, about 40. You're on the pension, yes. Things are a bit hard, oh, very hard, Peel, but it's all right. $750, she turned it down, she won a potato peeler. The whole crowd just went pure. I was the biggest ass in, in the room. And I looked at her and she looked at me and she gave me a big hug and Stacey, but she, she says, you know, Pio, I met you and Stacey today. I'm gonna be on the TV. This potato peeler's gonna be framed and I'm gonna put it up at the bowls club. That's worth more hundred more than $750. We just about had tears in our eyes. Thank you very much for having me. Ka kite, waved to the crowd and walked off. Director says, cut the show. We're, we're falling apart in the truck. And that's real New Zealand day. Eh? And that was special, bro.